the Cisco 9800 CL Cloud Controller. So guys, today I'm gonna to go over a quick overview of what this thing is and how to set it up. So basically what the 9800 CL is, it's just like all the rest of the 9800 controllers that we have, except this one is virtual. You can run it in ESXi VMware, you can run it in KVM, you could run it in AWS, you can run it in Google. Uh, Azure is also coming very soon. So you're gonna be able to roll this thing out in whatever manner you want. And if you're familiar with our old cloud controller that, that we had, the virtual wireless LAN controller, there was a lot of limitations around what that thing could do and what it can't do. The cool thing about the new 9800CL one is it is exactly like a hardware-based controller. So I can put traffic through it if I want, I can do flex connect if I want, I still get all the great features of a hardware-based controller, like encrypted traffic analytics, all that stuff is there. It's just in a different capacity where instead of having a hardware appliance, I'm putting this virtually somewhere. So when you guys go to deploy it, uh, there's a couple different options here and I've just pulled up the data sheet to show you guys, uh, but we have a small, medium, large type of deployment methodology here. And really it's the same for the private cloud or public cloud, public cloud meaning AWS or, or Google or Azure. But you can go into the data sheet here and you can take a look at what your resources are going to be. So if you're going to do the small, which is what we're going to test today, I need four virtual CPUs somewhere, eight gig of RAM. And then you can take a look to below here what the different sizing options are. So if I do the small, maximum number of access points is 1,000, maximum number of, of clients is 10,000. And we also have here the maximum throughput. So if I am putting this thing on premise and I am gonna have it inside of VMware, let's say, I will get a gig and a half of throughput through the box, which may be enough, may not be enough, depends on how you guys are deploying this. You also have the option of locally switch, which is the flex connect option. If you're deploying this in the public cloud, then you really are probably just gonna go public, or sorry, locally switched here. Um, since you don't want to send all your traffic to Amazon or Azure or Google. So that's just some of the basics of the wireless controller. And like I said here, you know, you guys can go on the data sheet here and this thing is almost identical to any other hardware appliance out there. So let's switch over and talk about what you guys will need to actually deploy this. So you're going to go to cisco.com and you're going to take a look at the download page for the 9800 CL. And on here, you're gonna need two files. And this is kind of where it gets a little quirky. You could probably deploy it with one, but I ran into a bug and wasn't really sure how to get around it. So the way I got around it is the way that I deploy my collaboration OVAs. So two things you're gonna need from this page here. You're gonna need the OVA for ESXi, and you're also gonna need the ISO file. And again, I understand they're big downloads here, almost a gig each one of these. Uh, but it'll be apparent in a minute why we actually need both of these. So go ahead and download these things, and then we're going to go and set this up. Okay, guys, so once you have your two files downloaded, you can see them. I've got them right here. I've got the ISO, and I've got the OVA. I'm basically going to use the OVA as just a template, and then I'm going to map the CD drive to the ISO here. So how we do that, and I'll show you guys why we need to do that in a second here too, is we're gonna go ahead here inside of ESXi and we're gonna go ahead and create and register. We're gonna deploy an OVF or OVA file. Click next and we're gonna give this a name. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to find the file that we downloaded, the OVA. So I've got the OVA right there. We're gonna go ahead and open. We're gonna put it inside of our data store. I'm gonna go through here. And actually this is where you will go ahead and select the size of the OVA that you need as well. So if you're only if you only need a thousand APs or three thousand APs or six thousand APs, you know, you can go ahead and select that right here. That's your different sizing options. To save space for me, and because I only have one access point, we're just gonna go ahead and do the small. And we're gonna click next again. And this is where I kept running into issues where it didn't, it wouldn't take the full OVA for some reason with the image and everything in it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna say, you know, don't worry about it and finish. 
and then I have my 9800 CL right here and we're gonna wait to power it on or it might power on automatically but if we try to go into it right now it's just gonna sit here and and spin so what I need to do is I need to get the ISO actually loaded in here so in order to do that first I'm gonna shut it off I'm gonna go over to host and I am going to upload that ISO to my data store. Let me say browse data store. You're gonna say upload, you can put this in a folder or wherever you want. Click on the ISO, click open, and that's gonna shoot it over to the data store inside your ESXi host. I've already got that uploaded there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go back to my virtual machine, click on edit settings, and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna modify a couple of things. So number one, I need to map that, that ISO file that we just uploaded to our data store. So I'm gonna go in here, hit browse, and I'm gonna find the ISO that I uploaded and I've got it right here. And we're gonna select that so that way when this thing boots, it's gonna be pointed right to this file here and the thing's gonna know how to install itself. The next thing we need to go in here is we need to map a couple different interfaces. So the way that this OVA builds out is there's three interfaces, three virtual interfaces on this controller. The first interface is gonna be your out of band management port. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got these networks already created here and I'm gonna say the first port is gonna be my VM network because that's my out of band management. Port two here, this is basically gonna be your trunk because we're gonna be sending traffic to the controller and the controller needs to be able to put it on whatever VLAN we need. So a port here is gonna be my 128 trunk, just what I called it. Um, but this is gonna be your trunk interface back to your switching environment. And then adapter three here, interface three, is gonna be a high availability port. Yes, you can run these in high availability just like a hardware controller. Um, I put this in here, I haven't pl played around with it yet or anything. You could probably disconnect it if you don't need it. But for the purpose of this, we're gonna leave it in there and we're gonna put it on a separate network for high availability. We're gonna go ahead and click save on this. We are also gonna go in here, and I just wanna show you guys how I set up my networks because this is also important, is that when you do a trunk, inside of ESXi, you need to put in here VLAN ID 4095. If you don't put 4095 in here, it's gonna be um, just set to a single VLAN. It's not gonna be a trunk port, and this is the only way that you can trunk inside of ESXi. If you don't do this, you're, you're gonna run into problems. The rest of your interfaces, you know, you can put on whatever VLAN uh, ID you want to, but for that trunk, we really need that on 4095. Then, we are going to go and we're going to start up our VMware image. And the cool thing here is this actually spins up pretty quick. So I'll show you guys, probably not in real time, but pretty close to real time here on uh, getting this thing uh, installed. So we're going to go ahead here, click any key to continue. And we're going to start booting off of that ISO that's in here. And we're going to load the virtual console there. and it's gonna go off by itself. I'll pause the video here um, and then, you know, and come back in probably two minutes, two, three minutes, and this thing will be up and running. So like I said, after two, three minutes, we're gonna be back up here. We're gonna to get to our initial configuration prompt here, and we are gonna go ahead and say yes to this. <clears throat> and would you like to enter basic management setup? Yes, and we're gonna to have to do a couple steps here before we actually get into the GUI. So you can enter a host name in here if you want. I'm gonna do the 9800CL for my host name. Enable secret, put your passwords in. Enable password, virtual terminal password. I am not gonna set up SNMP right now. You guys can go ahead if you want to. I am gonna just say no on that. And then this is where we're gonna set up our out of band management port here. So. I'm gonna set this up for a gigabit ethernet one because like I said to you guys before, I mapped port one to my out-of-band management. Port two is basically my trunk port and port three is gonna be all my high availability stuff. So it's asking me which port do I wanna do here for my management. And one kind of 
interesting thing here is you have to actually type out gigabit ethernet one here. You can't just do gig tab or whatever. You have to type the entire thing here. So we're going to go ahead and enter that. And then we're going to configure an IP address on here and you're going to give it an IP address so you can reach the GUI of this thing. 68, 142, 197. Okay. Sum that mask, 255, 255, 250. Fine for my test network here. And then it's going to spit you out kind of a show run uh, of the interface there. So I've got Gigabit Ethernet 1, 192, 168, 142, 197. Looks good. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to save our configuration and exit. Now this thing's going to kick me back out to a command prompt here and we're almost done, but I'll show you guys real quick here. I can't actually reach my controller yet. And that's because I am on a different network than the 142.197 network. So I need to put a route in place on the wireless controller here so it knows how to reach the other parts of my network. And I'm going to do that by doing a default route or a gateway of last resort we'll put in here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit enable, put in an enable password here. We're going to go in. Fake so I'm going to add in here my gateway of last resort and I'm going to do IP route 0 .0 .0, 0.0.0.0 0 .0 .0. and where we need to go. And now I've got a route in here. So if I go back to this, we should be able to hit this advanced and we could try to log in. Now, I didn't really set a username and password for the GUI yet. So I have to actually go back to the CLI and I need to put that in here. So we're already in configuration mode here. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do username, admin, privilege, 15, password, and set your super secret password for the web GUI. I'm just gonna do Cisco here. It's gonna go ahead and program that in. And now if we go back to here, we should be able to log in. And this is where we're gonna start the initial setup of the virtual controller here as well. So we're in here, I'm gonna say deployment model, standalone, it's not gonna be an HA pair. You can play around with the date and the time in here, put an NTP server in there if you would like. And then we're on to configuring that Gigabit Ethernet 2 interface, which is really just going to be a trunk. So what VLAN do I want to dump traffic on here? And we're just going to set it to VLAN 80. And we're going to put a management IP address on this. And really what this is going to do is this is the management IP address for the access points to talk to the controller. So they're going to talk to the controller on VLAN 80 and they're going to communicate to the IP address 192.168.80.5. So when our AP comes up, it's going to learn about this IP address, whether it's on the same subnet, so it's on VLAN 80 and it's just going to broadcast out and find it, or it could be using option 43, something like that. It's going to find the IP address and communicate over to it, but this is how the APs talk to the controller and this is also how we create that CAPWAP tunnel and we encapsulate all my data through that CapWeb tunnel to this IP address here. Okay. A default gateway for my 80 network, 192, 168, 80.1. And for all intents and purposes, we are done with this. Now we're gonna go over here, we're gonna add our first wireless network. I'm just gonna do WPA to personal and we're going to put in a password Cisco one two three oh, I've got to put a name in here so we'll do test SSID and we'll hit add and we'll go ahead and select next and we also need here so to fill out some of this AP certificate information we need a password in here, we'll just type in our super secret password again, and we'll go to the summary page. 
So basically right now I've got my access point, my controller configured here, access points on how to talk to it. I've created my first SSID and I didn't do anything fancy. So everything's just gonna get dropped off on that VLAN 80 right now. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit finish and we're gonna go ahead and hit yes. Okay, it might take a minute or so to get back to here. We can log back in, admin Cisco. And then at this point, your controller should be up. Take a look at the dashboard real quick. We can see that I've got my one wireless LAN. Access point is gonna be at zero. You know, depending on if you just boot the AP, if the AP was up already, it could take a couple minutes for the AP to show up in here. So I might pause this video and just refresh a couple times till the AP joins the controller. Eventually it'll be here and then I'll show you guys a quick test of, of everything working. Okay guys, so after a little bit here, you guys will see that the access point was able to join the controller and it says one access point over there. If I go to the top here, you'll see the test SSID. You can go ahead and click on that. I can enter in the password. And we should connect in a second here. That's SSID. We'll try to hit a web page real quick. Go to Yahoo and we're up. So that's pretty much it to getting this thing up and running. Um, a couple, couple quirky uh, things that hopefully you guys saw while I was going through this and help you going through it. Um, the biggest thing that I ran into was initially I didn't <clears throat> tag any of my packets so I was just dropping everything off on VLAN 1 and the interesting part I found was that VMware drops all untagged traffic so you want to make sure you're not using VLAN 1 in here anywhere um, because you might you're probably gonna run into the same issues that I had where VMware was just dropping everything and I couldn't figure out what was going on until I realized oh they don't do that so you know again hope this was helpful if you guys have any questions please comment below and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, subscribe. Thanks a lot.